Hello on Fulbrooks and this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this absolutely incredible radio map that was recently created using an Australian telescope that in some sense is completely mind-blowing especially when you discover how it was made and what exactly it represents. But let's just talk about the idea of radio astronomy first and also why it's actually really important. Now I'm sure by now all of you have heard that the very famous Arecibo Observatory, which is probably the most iconic radio observatory in the world, has recently collapsed and is obviously no longer operational. This of course was a huge blow to the scientific community, but despite this unfortunate loss of the observatory, the idea of radio astronomy and the principles of radio astronomy are in some sense reaching their golden age. We currently have a lot of different radio observations going on everywhere in the world, and some of the biggest discoveries in regards to, for example, black holes, neutron stars, and a lot of other mysteries in the universe, including the famous picture of the black hole that was taken last year, all of them have been actually done with various radio telescopes around the planet. And so in that sense, radio astronomy is doing absolutely incredible today. But first of all, what's the history of this? How did all of this start? Well, it started, as a lot of things in science do, completely by accident. The physicist working for Bell Labs by the name of Karl Jansky was working on this very peculiar radio antenna, which was completely unrelated to his actual work at Bell Labs, and was just a kind of a hobby he had. This antenna was supposed to be able to receive approximately 20 MHz of frequency, and the idea was to actually try to see what he can hear with this antenna, what he can actually detect with it. And to his surprise, he was able to detect a lot of distant thunderstorms, also a lot of nearby thunderstorms, and then some unusual noise. So essentially, he was able to see three separate things in his observations with his somewhat peculiar looking antenna. Now, the first two, the thunderstorms, were not really that surprising. As a matter of fact, thunderstorms and lightning is exactly what he expected to find. But the static noise didn't really make sense. And what's more is that this unusual static seemed to actually be repeating every 23 hours and 56 minutes. As if to some extent it was directly connected to the rotation of planet Earth, but not necessarily coming from the sun, because it was coming from directions that were not where the sun was. And eventually he pinpointed the location where it was coming from. It was the center of the galaxy. He discovered what he called star noise. Unfortunately, back then nobody was interested in studying this, and for many years this idea was kind of just an idea. There was no interest from the government or from the Bell Labs to try to continue his studies. But eventually his ideas picked up, and people started to study this in more detail, realizing that everything around us was producing a lot of radio waves. With the actual radio map today being this absolutely incredible and beautiful formation of various signals coming from everywhere. And the thing about radio waves, as you can see summarized in this image from NASA, is that they actually go through our atmosphere without any impediment. In other words, radio telescopes can easily observe the entire universe and even see through the dust in various galaxies and detect and study some of the most unusual and practically invisible in other frequencies objects. What's more is that radio signals also go through various types of dust. So in that sense, it allows us to study objects that are practically hidden by the gas in the center of the Milky Way. And so once the scientists realized how useful this was for astronomy, it basically exploded everywhere. Radio astronomy became extremely important and several major constructions of several major telescopes started to be created around the planet. With some of the most influential and some of the most incredible telescopes today being in Australia. And what's interesting is that approximately 15 years ago, the first survey of the southern sky was able to cover about 25% of the night skies, and it took over 20 years to complete. This was the Sydney University's Molonglo Sky Survey, which allowed us to essentially create a radio map of the southern skies. In the process also discovering a lot of previously invisible galaxies and a lot of other things that have since been analyzed and reanalyzed many times. But now something even more incredible has been achieved by the scientists working in the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder Telescope that was able to create a map that is absolutely mind-blowing in only two week time. Essentially something that took over two decades before is now possible in under one month. And in this particular case, it was also able to discover millions of different galaxies 
with about a million galaxies previously being completely undiscovered. And to date, this is the most accurate and the most detailed radio map of the entire southern sky. But what's even cooler is that you can explore all of this by yourself using the link in the description below. So basically what you're looking at right here, all of these tiny stars, these are not stars. This map is a radio map and every little spot is a tiny, tiny galaxy somewhere far, far away. And here, if you were to zoom in, you would see how many incredible different galaxies this telescope was able to discover. And not surprisingly, the tiny blue line in the middle, that's the radio waves coming from all sorts of gas that's essentially the part of the center of our own galaxy. That's the Milky Way itself. And if you've ever studied radio astronomy or if you know some of the most uh, popular objects, you can kind of start telling them apart. This right here is the Centaurus A galaxy, essentially the brightest radio galaxy and one of the brightest radio objects in the night skies that we currently have. But here you can also learn about some of the other objects you might not be familiar with, like for example this supernova remnant, the galaxy known as M83, also known as the Southern Pinwheel, or some other unusual formations like this galactic cluster known as the Norma Cluster. And so there are definitely a lot of cool things to discover here and so many other objects that are actually kind of worth uh, exploring by yourself, although I'll, I'll mention a few at the end of the video. But what all of this of course means is that despite the setbacks and the tragedy of the Arecibo Observatory, what essentially started as a hobby back in 1930s is now a very popular and a fully-fledged scientific study that creates these incredible maps and allows us to discover a lot of different mysteries about the universe and even take pictures of black holes. And that's the definition of mind-blowing. But when it comes to this particular observation and this particular survey, the mind-blowing part is how quick and how detailed all of this was. Here's by the way what the Tarantula Nebula inside of the Large Magellanic Cloud looks like, and honestly, I was super excited to see this in so much detail because, first of all, Tarantula Nebula is only visible from the southern part of the planet, and second of all, we've never really had such a detailed observation of some of these objects. Now, to create all of this, the scientists took approximately 900 different pictures, and each of them took about 15 minutes of exposure. By pointing the telescopes at each of these squares you see here for approximately 15 minutes, and then by analyzing the data for just under two weeks, the scientists were able to produce this absolutely incredible image that was then published on the web. And if you ever wonder how many galaxies there are in this image, it's around 3 million. There are 3 million little dots in this entire image. And because the scientists now have this method of producing these images and these surveys really quick, it opens a new opportunity for scientists to study how these things change over time, essentially by creating a kind of a radio movie, radio animation if you want, the scientists will be able to see how the galaxies and the entire universe change and transform as the time goes on. And so going from a single image to an actual animation of how radio map transforms once it happens is going to be a tremendous achievement because it will allow us to understand how galaxies and other objects evolve over time and how everything around them changes as well. And in order to make all of this work, the scientists had to actually come up with several ingenious devices and several new techniques that allow them to observe the whole sky extremely fast. And some of these new discoveries will most likely make it to other industries as well. As a matter of fact, in the past, a lot of the major discoveries from these Australian facilities resulted in eventually the creation of the Wi-Fi as we know it. In other words, the inventions coming from these facilities eventually make it to our daily lives. And although we don't really know how this is going to affect our lives just yet, it might actually create something absolutely incredible in the next few decades. But on that note, just go and explore this map by yourself because you're going to be able to discover some really cool things here. For example, this is the region of Sagittarius A star. This is where the central black hole is located. And right next to it, you can also discover that here's Jupiter. This is actually what Jupiter looks like in radio waves. Or the most famous supernova, Kepler supernova. Also in a relatively similar location in the night skies. And so on that note, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the map, which is in the description below. And also, compare it to the previous radio map created by another Australian university that you can find in the description as well. Either way, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.